Conrad Hal Waddington CBEFRSFRSE was a British developmental biologist, paleontologist, geneticist, embryologist and philosopher who laid the foundations for systems biology. He had wide interests that included poetry and painting, as well as left-wing political leanings. In his book The Scientific Attitude, he touched on political topics such as central planning and praised Marxism as a profound scientific philosophy. Life Waddington, known as Watt, to his friends and con, to family, was born to Hal and Mary Ellen Waddington, 8 November 1905. Until nearly three years of age, Waddington lived with his parents in India, where his father worked on a tea estate in the Wayanad district. In 1910, at the age of four, he was sent to live with family in England including his aunt, uncle, and Quaker grandmother. His parents remained in India until 1928. During his childhood, he was particularly attached to a local druggist and distant relation, Dr. Dog. Doag, whom Waddington called Grandpa, introduced Waddington to a wide range of sciences from chemistry to geology. During the year following the completion of his entrance exams to university, Waddington received an intense course in chemistry from E. J. Homeyard. Aside from being something of a genius of a chemistry teacher, Homeyard introduced Waddington to the Alexandrian Gnostics and the Arabic alchemists from these lessons in metaphysics. Waddington first gained an appreciation for interconnected holistic systems. Waddington reflected that this early education prepared him for Alfred North Whitehead's philosophy in the 1920s and 30s and the cybernetics of Norbert Wiener and others in the 1940s. He attended Clifton College and Sydney Sussex College, Cambridge. He took the Natural Sciences Tripos, earning a first in Part II in Geology in 1926. In 1928, he was awarded an Arnold Gerstenberg studentship in the University of Cambridge, whose purpose was to promote the study of moral philosophy and metaphysics among students of natural science. Both men and women, he took up a lecturership in zoology and was a fellow of Christ's College until 1942. His friends included Gregory Bateson, Walter Gropius, P. Snow, Solly Zuckerman, Joseph Needham, and John Desmond Bernal. His interests began with paleontology but moved on to the heredity and development of living things. He also studied philosophy. During World War II he was involved in operational research with the Royal Air Force and became scientific advisor to the Commander-in-Chief of Coastal Command from 1944 to 1945. After the war, in 1947, he replaced Francis Albert Ely Crew as Professor of Animal Genetics at the University of Edinburgh. He would stay at Edinburgh for the rest of life with the exception of one year when he was a fellow on the faculty in the Centre for Advanced Studies at Wesleyan University in Middletown, Connecticut. His personal papers are largely kept at the University of Edinburgh Library. Waddington was married twice. His first marriage produced a son, Jake Waddington, professor of physics at the University of Minnesota, but ended in 1936. He then married Margaret Juston Blanco White, daughter of the writer Amber Reeves, with whom he had two daughters, the anthropologist Caroline Humphrey and mathematician Dusso Macduff. Evolution. In the early 1930s, Waddington and many other embryologists looked for the molecules that would induce the amphibian neural tube. The search was beyond the technology of that time, and most embryologists moved away from such deep problems. Waddington, however, came to the view that the answers to embryology lay in genetics and in 1935 went to Thomas Hunt Morgan's Drosophila Laboratory in California. Even though this was a time when most embryologists felt that genes were unimportant and just played a role in minor phenomena such as eye color, in the late 1930s, Waddington produced formal models about how gene regulatory products could generate developmental phenomena, showed how the mechanisms underpinning drosophila development could be studied through a systematic analysis of mutations that affected the 
development of the Drosophila wing. In a period of great creativity at the end of the 1930s, he also discovered mutations that affected cell phenotypes and wrote his first textbook of developmental epigenetics, a term that then meant the external manifestation of genetic activity. Waddington also coined other essential concepts, such as canalization, which refers to the ability of an organism to produce the same phenotype despite variation in genotype or environment. He also identified a mechanism called genetic assimilation which would allow an animal's response to an environmental stress to become a fixed part of its developmental repertoire, and then went on to show that the mechanism would work. In 1972, Waddington founded the Center for Human Ecology, Epigenetic Landscape. Waddington's epigenetic landscape is a metaphor for how gene regulation modulates development. Among other metaphors, Waddington asks us to imagine a number of marbles rolling down a hill. The marbles will compete for the grooves on the slope, and come to rest at the lowest points. These points represent the eventual cell fates, that is, tissue types. Waddington coined the term creode to represent this cellular developmental process. The idea was actually based on experiment. Waddington found that one effect of mutation was to affect how cells differentiated. He also showed how mutation could affect the landscape and used this metaphor in his discussions on evolution. He was the first person to emphasize that evolution mainly occurred through mutations that affected developmental anatomy. Genetic assimilation Waddington proposed an evolutionary process, genetic assimilation as a Darwinian mechanism that allows certain acquired characteristic to become heritable. According to Navis, Waddington focused his genetic assimilation work on the cross venlis trait of Drosophila. This is a trait that occurs with high-frequency and heat-treated flies. After a few generations, the trait can be found in the population, without the application of heat. Based on hidden genetic variation that has been assimilated, genetic assimilation is sometimes cited as a Lamarckian mechanism, however Waddington described his mechanism as Darwinian and not Lamarckian. The biologist Wallace Arthur wrote that genetic assimilation looks but is not Lamarckian. It is a special case of the evolution of phenotypic plasticity. Neo-Darwinism Waddington is usually cited as a Darwinian and not a non-Darwinian. However some of the Neo-Darwinian modern synthesis theorists described Waddington as a non-Darwinian, as he claimed that different processes to those of microevolution drive macroevolution. According to Waddington, in his lifetime, was widely perceived primarily as a critic of Neo-Darwinian evolutionary theory. His criticisms of Neo-Darwinian evolutionary theory were focused on what he saw as unrealistic, atomistic models of both gene selection and trait evolution. In particular, he felt that the Neo-Darwinians badly neglected the phenomenon of extensive gene interactions and that the randomness of mutational effects posited in the theory was a false postulate. Even though Waddington became critical of the Neo-Darwinian synthetic theory of evolution, he still described himself as a Darwinian and his work attempted to correct and expand Neo-Darwinism, not replace it. He called for an extended evolutionary synthesis based from his research on epigenetics and genetic assimilation. Waddington as an organizer Waddington was very active in advancing biology as a discipline. He contributed to a book on the role of the sciences in times of war, and helped set up several professional bodies representing biology as a discipline. A remarkable number of his contemporary colleagues in Edinburgh became fellows of the Royal Society during his time there, or shortly thereafter. Waddington was an old-fashioned intellectual who lived in both the arts and science meal years of the 1950s and wrote widely. His 1960 book Behind Appearance, a study of the relations between painting and the natural sciences in this century not only has wonderful pictures, but is still worth reading. Waddington was, without doubt, 
the most original and important thinker about developmental biology of the pre-molecular age and the Medal of the British Society for Developmental Biology is named after him. Selected Works Books Waddington, H. An Introduction to Modern Genetics, London, George Alien and Unwin Limited, Waddington, H. Organizers and Genes, Cambridge, Cambridge University Press, Waddington, H. And Others, Science and Ethics, George Allen and Unwin Limited, Waddington, H. How Animals Develop, London, George Allen and Unwin Limited, Waddington, H. The Scientific Attitude, Pelican Books, Waddington, H. The Epigenetics of Birds, Cambridge, Cambridge University Press, Waddington, H. Principles of Embryology, London, George Allen and Unwin, Waddington, H. The Strategy of the Genes, London, George Allen and Unwin, Waddington, H. Biological Organization Cellular and Subcellular, Proceedings of a Symposium, London, Pergamon Press, Waddington, H. The Ethical Animal, London, George Allen and Unwin, Waddington, H. The Human Evolutionary System, in, Michael Banton, Darwinism in the Study of Society, London, Tavistock, Waddington, H. The Nature of Life, London, George Allen and Unwin, Waddington, H. New Patterns in Genetics and Development, New York, Columbia University Press, Waddington, H. Principles of Development and Differentiation, New York, Macmillan Company, Waddington, H. Ed. Towards the Theoretical Biology, 4 vols, Edinburgh, Edinburgh University Press, Waddington, H. Kenny, A. Longer Higgins, H. C. Lucas, J. R. The Nature of Mind, Edinburgh, Edinburgh University Press, Waddington, H. Kenny, A. Longer Higgins, H. C. Lucas, J. R. The Development of Mind, Edinburgh, Edinburgh University Press, Waddington, H. Tools for Thought, London, Jonathan Cape Limited. Papers Waddington, H. 1942, Canalization of Development and the Inheritance of Acquired Characters, Nature 150-563-565, Waddington, H. and Carter T. C. 1952, Malformations in Mouse Embryos Induced by Trip and Blue, Nature 169-27-28, Waddington, H. 1952, Selection of the Genetic Basis for an Acquired Character, Nature 169-278, Waddington, H. 1953, Genetic Assimilation of an Acquired Character, Evolution 7-118-126, Waddington, H. 1953, Epigenetics and Evolution, SYMP, SOC, EXP, Biol 7 to 186 minus 199, Waddington, H. 1956, Genetic Assimilation of the Bithorax Phenotype, Evolution 10 to 1 minus 13, Waddington, H. 1961, Genetic Assimilation, Advances Janet. 10 to 257 minus 290, Waddington, H. 1974, A Catastrophe Theory of Evolution, Annals of the New York Academy of Sciences 231 to 32 minus 42, 